Hi guys. Welcome back. I suppose actually it should be the other way around. I'm welcome back. Uh, <laughs> last Saturday I was teaching for Art Waves, uh, coast to coast events, or sea to sea events um, out of uh, Ontario. So I was doing a few Zoom classes for them last Saturday. So that explains why I wasn't here. I did, however, post the video for our uh, cute little honey, lavender honey bee, um, which sort of segues me into telling you about my adventure. Um, we've had a, a large number of orders for these cattle tags and uh, so much so that we weren't quite sure we were keeping up. So I placed a nice big order and I ordered some extra bees to go along with it so that we would have lots for everybody. The shipment arrived uh, early in the week and had obviously been dropped and every single one of the bumblebees <laughs> in that shipment was broken every single one of them. So um, Karen Beaupre, God love her, my pal at uh, Southern Ridge Trading, who is in the middle of preparing for a major show, dropped everything and cut some more and then had them shipped to me as fast as we could get them. So they were supposed to arrive on Friday. They have not. Um, according to tracking, they will be uh, delivered on Monday. So if you are waiting for a shipment on your tags, that is why everything got delayed. We're seeing shipping delays across the board, but then having them arrive um, broken was very frustrating. So um, I apologize for the delays and uh, we've been sending out notices and messages. So if you haven't seen one, um, check your spam. It might be in there, but just to let you know that um, those are our priority. As soon as those arrive here on Monday, we are packing and shipping all of those orders to get them out of here. Most of them are already stacked up and sitting in the storeroom in boxes and bins and envelopes just waiting for that piece to arrive so that we can get them out of here. So that's my excitement for this week because it wasn't the only shipment that came in damaged. <laughs> so it's been an interesting week. <laughs> um, I did have some happy mail this week, which was very nice. I, I've never seen a Halloween card. You've never seen a Halloween card? Well, it's not something I associate with a greeting card, but I've never seen one. But it doesn't change the fact that I absolutely love it. This is so cute. Happy Halloween. It came from Provo, Utah from Miss Sandy Barton. Uh, she had a lovely little note in there. It was very sweet and uh, greatly appreciated. Sandy, this is going in my bin with the rest of my, my little keepsakes. Thank you so much. I love getting stuff like that. It just gets me in the feels. A message from Linda Sifranco says, My niece Crystal is watching from New York. This is her first time. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Crystal. Thanks for joining us. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to learn real quick. You have to have a sense of humor <laughs> and thick skin, <laughs> which is normal for our family. Um, today, we're going to be painting uh, Farm Fresh Milk, which is that cattle tag with the little cow on it. I absolutely love this piece. It's, I think it's just cute. Brings back some really great memories. Um, growing up when I was a kid, I have an uncle and an aunt that owned dairy farms. And um, so we used to spend a fair amount of time working on the dairy farms. And this just appealed. So hopefully you like it. I'm enjoying it. And Deb is up early. Why are you up? Did you know she better be heavily caffeinated? I think she's got more caffeine in her than she needs. <laughs> as long as she's. Are you ready to people, Deb? <laughs> With Deb, yeah. Um, I'm excited about uh, the third of Jan, third uh, of December. Uh, I've been planning and plotting and organizing stuff, and um, our piece is ready. It's that triptych, the three pieces, um, Home for the Holidays. I think it's a really pretty piece, lots of fun technique in it. Um, I, I just like the piece and the fact that you can either hang them or have them standing is, is great too. My conundrum is in how in heck I'm going to <laughs> ship all of these prizes because that stack is getting higher every day. I got a wonderful box from uh, Miss Sheila Landry at tollpaintingdesigns.com. She sent me an absolutely incredible box the other day. It had four beautiful prizes in it. Um, I have uh, six art stuff bags 
filled with Dynasty Black Gold brushes. I think the sets in them are six and eight set uh, brush sets. Beautiful brush sets. So we have a bunch of those. I have signs and beautiful wood surfaces from Southern Ridge Trading that are just spectacular and just in time for Christmas. They're beautiful. We have such a ridiculous amount of of goodies to give away. We have stamps from Stampendous. We have stencils from Decor. We have um, a water marbling kit from Decor. That one's really exciting. There is so much stuff in that storeroom. It's not funny. So y'all, I mean, grab some friends, have them join us on the third. We're going to need a lot of people in order to give all this stuff away. So make sure you join us on the third. Come and play. We're going to have a great time. Um, there will likely be Christmas music. As you can see, Renee's already been building stuff for the, um, <laughs> for all of the artwork and, and whatnot on the uh, video. So I, I think that that looks pretty good. I like the fireplace. Warm and toasty. We need warm and toasty today. It is miserably wet and damp. Miss Nicole is visiting. The hurricane or subtropical, whatever they're calling her. Know. She's just depressed Topical now. Depression. Yep, Nicole's depressed now. So she, <laughs> that's, she's here leaving all her depression behind. So, yeah. I sound like I'm in a tunnel because uh, mom's microphone's a little bit more sensitive than mine. Okay. Yeah, so that's why I sound like I'm in a tunnel. <laughs> so, and um, I also got more goodies from Southern Ridge Trading. Look at this. Look at this. She made a mini. <laughs> so we have a mini cow tag. And um, she's got a new one here. These are the mini snowflakes. I just got so excited about these. Miniature snowflakes. So I'm going to have some fun with those. I love this. I think this will make a really cute Christmas ornament. So I'm excited about that. I do have a shout out for this week. Um, if you are looking for a gift for uh, a fellow painter, or if you're B, shopping for yourself and are a painter, you're going to want to check out the brush guys this week. If you go to the brush guys.com, they have a 50% off sale on dynasty black gold brushes this week. So like soonest get in there. I know that they are out of stock on the quills, the black gold quills, but he has ordered some more and don't forget, use your Tracy M coupon code. When you're on that site, it's going to give you an additional discount off of that discounted price so you got to go and check it out so check out the brushguys.com this week for your dynasty black gold brushes so today we're painting cows moo cows moo cows moo cows i'm happy uh, uh -huh. the zombie needs a santa hat working on it he's working on it <laughs> 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 am i surprised no no so either we can try and keep the the zombie hat or the zombie in general, or I'll come up with something for... I'm thinking they should make a zombie elf. <laughs> yeah, he's already green. <laughs> he's already green, so, that, you know. It can be done. It can be done. Um, what else? Is there anything else I need to do? I don't know. I, I ran out of everything this week. I ran out of envelopes. I ran out of <laughs> um, keychains. I ran out of buttons. Ran out of stickers. And everything's been ordered, but I'm still waiting for it all to come in. So I got some envelopes this week, uh, but it's been really tough getting shipping stuff this week. The last couple of weeks, actually. I think it's you're out noted. of focus. <laughs> no, that's just how I look today. Blurry? <laughs> really? A little blurry. Yep. That and the hair. You can tell it's humid. The hair does whatever the hair wants to do. So... So we are going to be painting this little guy. I love this one. I'm a fan. I love cows. So we are painting this one, the Farm Fresh Milk. And uh, it's a fun one and it's not difficult to paint. And it's very forgiving because you can do a lot of uh, distressing. Anything that you don't like, you can distress. It's always good. So if you guys are ready to get started, so am I. I'll get there. Give me a second. <laughs> Give you a second. Good thing you're not on television. Some producer would be screaming in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, neat segue. 
Yeah, Tinkerbell. Yeah, there's an explosion. So this is the one that we're working on today. I just think this one is fun. I like the elevation. I used a couple of small pieces of um, wood just to lift it off the surface, about a quarter of an inch. I like that elevation. It gives it a little bit of dimension, but I like the cast shadow when it's hanging up. So really, I just like the way it looks. And it gives you a little freedom to, you don't have to necessarily place it where I did. You could put it wherever you wanted. But um, yeah, I just, Karen Beaupre at Southern Ridge is just so remarkably talented with her design ideas. When I, she sent me this, I just, oh, I fell in love with it. And then, of course, you know, Misery loves company. So I told her that I needed a pig and a cow. And I needed a horse and a goat and a chicken and a bumblebee, <laughs> and a bumblebee because the brain doesn't stop. So, um, Linda Safranco made a very good point. What's that? Um, what's it? Oh, the giveaways. Yeah. So the giveaways today, because it's all about Dynasty Black Gold this week. That has a lot of brushes. It's a lot of brushes. That is a lot of brushes. It's a six brush set of Dynasty Black Gold. Courtesy of FM Brush, a Dynasty Brush. Yeah. There's a lot of brushes. And there's an art stuff bag and some other goodies. There's always other goodies. Yeah. Because I like I like giving goodies. You need a bunny. A bunny. Oh. Uh oh. That's dead, by the way. Oh, we need a bunny. We need a bunny. Write that down. I need a bunny. <laughs> Seriously, write it down because I won't remember. <laughs> bunny for dinner. Bunny for dinner. No. Get so, a duck. And a, a duck? Duck. Ducks are on farms. Yes, I know. You could have a duck farm. A duck a bunny farm. farm. Bunny farm. I like the idea of a bunny. Not so much the Yeah, duck but you don't people. typically use cattle tag on bunnies. No. You don't technically use cattle tags on bumblebees either, but. <laughs> strong bumblebee. <laughs> it's a very strong bumblebee. So this piece has um, quite a few techniques involved in it, but it's not as difficult as it appears. Quite honestly, it really isn't. So we're going to start with the background on this. Now we've done this type of background before. Uh, I've got a base color of, okay, just making sure I'm in the shot. I have a tendency to drift off of the shot. Uh, the base color we've got here is Prussian blue. And I'm going to use, this is a half inch check stencil. This is one of the M square stencils. M238, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe? Could I be? I don't know. Maybe you're sitting right in front of them. So. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> Quarter or a half inch check. I think it's M238, I think it is. 38 is quarter inch. Okay, so it's 37. And 237. Yes. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Still in this early. We'll get there. Sooner or later I get there, right? So the color that I'm using is a little bit of cobblestone. I really like this color when I'm working over top of these dark blues. It gives me the contrast that I want, gives me that lighter value, but it doesn't come screaming off of there. So we are using cobblestone for our check. Now your brush should be just about dry. Make sure you've got a decent amount of paint in it, but it should be almost dry. We don't want a ton of paint on here. So circular fashion, change directions frequently. It's a light touch. You don't need to work hard to do this. We're not looking for perfection. We're not looking for full opacity on this. We just want some nice squares. We're going to distress the heck out of it anyway. So we don't need to have a ton of color on there. Just means less work when it comes to distressing. They're liking the bling on your left hand. Oh yeah, I'm loving my bling. <laughs> this is what 38 years of marriage gets you <laughs> a, <ring. laughs> a couple of kids and lots of sparklies <laughs> my husband pampered me this year um, he bought a beautiful necklace of pearls 
and um, it turned out it was way too short. So he took me back to the jeweler and we were going to um, just choose another one or have it lengthened or whatever. So we ended up choosing another pearl necklace, which is gorgeous. <laughs> and um, while he was sorting that out, I saw this in one of the jewelry, in one of the cases. And when the jeweler came over with the other purchases, would you like to try that on? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> and it fit like it was made for me. So it ended up coming home with me too. So it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's four carats. It's a beast. Not a real diamond. It is not a diamond. No, it is a citrine. A oh, citrine? It is a citrine. Is that like lemon? I guess. Ordinarily, um, most citrine is is a little uh, cloudier, hmm. sometimes a little more opaque. You don't often see them really Champagne crisp. yellow. Champagne yellow, and this one is just so pretty. Hmm. Nice color. It is. It's beautiful. And it's very sparkly. <laughs> so yes, he pampered me a little. It was nice. <clears throat> so... So you can see that this stenciling is not perfect. It is not fully opaque. I'm not really concerned with it being so. But I do want to cover the whole surface. So I'm going to Here we go. Oh, and I still need one more. Silly. Here we go. Yeah, I didn't wear the ring for the first couple of days because I hadn't had my nails done. And I, you know, my hands looked like I'd been digging potatoes. So um, now I got sparkly. And what good is the sparkly if you can't show it off? <laughs> so we're going to distress this. Give it a second to dry. Even though the we're not talking about a huge amount of paint. Um, it is still a little bit wet, so make sure that it's dry. And then you're going to take, I like these, um, these uh, reusable, washable sanding sponges. These are a finishing sanding sponge. So they're not super coarse. Um, so they're not going to gouge or scratch the surface, but they are going to let me wear the color away. So I'm going to sand this so that I remove some of that gray color. And you'll note that I am sanding in one direction only. So I'm going vertically. And I want to wear through that gray in a few places. I kind of like that worn look. And if you happen to distress the edges while you're at it, that's okay. So, there we go. So, it's neat that that Prussian blue gives us that color. I'm going to take a shot towel and wipe off the dust. Just like so. And I'm going to grab my fugly brush and a little bit of water. I just like how this looks because it looks so light after it's been sanded. I like to just take a little bit of water. It does two things. One, it helps clear off the, um, the dust, but it also gives you a chance to see just how much distressing you've done because sometimes it's hard to tell. So that looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that. So I'll dry it really quick. 
That little bit of water cleans away a few things, gives you a clearer idea of where you are as far as the distressing is concerned. Oh, I like that. Very much. I like it when it things look worn, time-worn. I find if you use a coarser sandpaper when you're doing this kind of thing, you get scratches and gouges in things. And I don't really care for that. I like a softer wear. It's, it just gives it more of a time-worn feel as opposed to being you know, sanded away and banged up. And I prefer that to the the harsher look. So we're going to take a little bit of asphaltum. I know that you're surprised by that. And we're going to float around the outside edges first. So I've got a nice big one inch angle for this or three quarter will do fine. And I'm just going to float around the outside edge, darkest value to the outside edge like so. We're not looking for a perfect float. We just want that darker brown to the outside. So it's not going to look super pretty for a while. And then when you dry it, it's going to give this a warm, distressed look on the outside. Like it's been in the farmyard forever, no day. So you can see we've got a nice float going around the outside. I'm going to deepen that. I want it a little bit bigger. I like the the layers give it more of an aged appearance. If you try to do this all in one go, it just looks dirty. Don't really want that. You can tell that this is not a neat and tidy float. Not looking for perfection here. So let's dry that. Yeah, that did it. That's what I wanted. Just like that. So we've got that nice dark aged look around the outside edge. So now I'm going to take my fugly brush and some water and a little bit of asphaltum. I just want to create a really thin wash of asphaltum and I'm going to brush that on vertically. So one direction only. I don't want it too strong. just enough to age the whole thing. And then I dry that. So that little bit of asphaltum over top of all of that just gives it a warm feel and it tones everything. Gives us that nice distressed, rustic, countryfied look. I love how that looks. It's very soft, it's very subtle, but now it's ready for whatever you want to do on top of it. So from this point, let this dry really well. Give it you know, 15 or 20 minutes to let it dry really well before you trace and transfer. And my reason behind that is that even though it feels dry, the paint underneath is still a little bit soft. And if you trace too soon, it makes it harder to get those lines off in the end because pushes it down, it indents it a little bit. So give it a chance to dry before you start tracing and transferring. Isn't that a nice background? Super subtle, still has that nice distressed look, that aged look, you still get the pattern in there. And then that little bit of aging around the outside edge just warms it up a little bit so that you're ready now to put your sunflowers and our cow on there. So I did a little prep ahead. So I have my base coats done. Um, so we'll walk through those. So I've got a little bit of lush green or antique green for those leaves. I am out of lush green, so I'm using my antique green. So we have that lush green. There's just the, the two leaves. We've got another one up here we're going to do. 
we have a little bit of gesso on the petals of the sunflower and on that leaf. Because we're working with a yellow, working over top of this dark blue, you're going to be fighting against it the whole time. So a thin layer of gesso or a little bit of warm white, um, just to base coat those sunflowers petals and you, you'll have a much easier time. And then I did the same thing for the lettering. Our lettering is going to be white, fully opaque white. So I wanted to put down a little bit of gesso as well, just to give them a good, so we had good coverage. So the center of these is just base coated with a little bit of asphaltum. I love this color. Most of you already know that. And I like it in particular for the centers of these flowers. And then of course, um, talking about gesso, this is my favorite. This is uh, Decort Media Gesso. I love this one for a couple of good reasons. Um, one, I like the size. You don't have to big old jar or something on, on your uh, painting table. I like the size format. I like that this one is a little thicker. If I need it thinned, I can just add a little bit of water or glaze to it to thin it. But I like the consistency of this one. It's nice and thick. I can create textures with this, dimensional effects with this, and it covers beautifully. So I get, you know, a nice opaque base or a really good substrate to work over top of. So if you're looking for a good quality gesso and you don't want to have a gallon of it floating around, this is my favorite. I love this one. I have since the day they created it. So our colors for this one are super simple. We're going to start with a little bit of Sunny Day, which is this one. This is a very buttery yellow. I love this tone. It's just that sunny yellow, but it's nice and warm and it does everything I need it to do. So we're going to work with some Sunny Day. And Sunny Day over top of this yellow is going to work very nice. So I'm using a number four round for this. Um, you can use whatever brush size or, or type of brush works for you. Uh, but I'm a fan of these. So I base coat from the center of the flower down to the tip and then go back out to the tip and pull down. I like to paint in the shape of the petal because any lines or brush strokes that it creates follows the shape and so it just falls into the design. And I whoopsied. There we go. So good old sunny day. Nice bright yellow. It's buttery, it's creamy, but it's got lots of light. That appeals to me about a good yellow. It needs to, needs to have sunshine in it. Now, I am um, still trying to get caught up on so many things, but um, I did finish my rooster yesterday. And I finished the lamb last night. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about those two. So hopefully we'll get that pattern out early in the week, if not tomorrow. Yeah, you get a sick puppy. We get a sick puppy? Yeah, puppy sick. Why? Yeah, she doesn't have the energy and she's not eating. Yeah. Poor puppy dog. She won't even take a treat. She took a Twizzler. Okay. When... Why do you only brush in one direction? Um, because the stria that that brushing in that one direction creates works in your favor. If you've got brush marks going in, you know, multiple directions, that just doesn't give you the smooth finish that you want. Whereas if you pull all your brush marks in the same direction, it just creates natural lines just like the flower does in their petals. I 
also allows for some more consistent base coats so you're not fighting against it. I like having that little coat of gesso under there because now I'm not having to fight against all that blue, that dark blue. Just makes life a whole bunch simpler. Now this piece works up pretty quick. Mainly due to, well one, it's not a very big surface, but the design is, I kept the design as simple as possible for a couple of really good reasons. One, um, I'm a firm believer that simplicity won't let you down. Simple works. The more elaborate a design is, the more things can go wrong. So I've got pretty good coverage. It's not perfect, but pretty good coverage. Um, this will allow me to come back in for a second coat. I'm going to get better coverage the second time around, obviously, but I'm not having to fight against lines or brush marks that I've created because they go in you know, 10 different directions. And it just makes that second coat that much simpler. Pretty, pretty. Love this sunny day. Such a nice yellow. I'm going to dry this real quick. So I put the second coat on those petals down there and we will be good to go. pretty. love painting sunflowers. They're such a simple flower. You can have a great deal of fun with them. They can be elaborate or simple. They don't have to be um, overly detailed to be effective, which is really nice. There we go. Make sure this is good and dry. So I'm trying out that coffee rub on our steaks tonight. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Nice. I have a coffee rub we use for barbecuing and I wanted to I wanted to do some grilled steaks tonight and I thought perfect time. Use that coffee coffee rub. So I'm going to grab our next color, which is, I've been using orange flame for everything of late. And I don't know where my orange flame went. There it is. I, and I've noticed I'm running out of paint. I know, no, no response from Renee on that one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out. Why my microphone has reverb and yours doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, and I never added it. So. <laughs> so I'm using a little bit of uh, Sunny Day. I love this orange. Not Sunny Day. Orange Flame. Hello. <laughs> Lights are on. Nobody's home. So I am just going to float in a little bit of color. And I'm on the sunflowers. I like to give them that little bit of a curve, a like bowl shape. So the float on these petals is going to go like that. And I've got way too much color in my brush. So on those larger petals close to the front, there we go, 
it's just a C-shaped float that creates a little bowl. And I start it in from the edge a little bit, create that little bowl, and then I stop in from the edge a little bit so that it, I'm really not happy with this one. I'm going to remove it. So taking a wet brush, I'm not happy with that float, so I'm just going to remove it. So wet brush on that float, just scrub it a little bit with the chisel edge. It'll take that paint off. There we go. Just do it gently. You know, we're removing fresh paint, not scrubbing the kitchen floor. So then I'll just, look at that. Bob's your uncle, Sally's your aunt. So go back and I'm going to pick up a little of orange flame and I'm going to put that float back in. There we go. That's be much better. It was a little on the garish side. I wasn't happy with that. So it's a little U-shaped or C-shaped float that starts here, goes across and comes up here, but you're coming in from the edge of the petal by about an eighth of an inch. So all of those petals that are closest to you get that C-shaped float. And what that creates is the illusion that the petal curves up a little bit, creates a little bit of a bowl. So I'm going to switch to a smaller angled shader. I'm going to go to a 3 8 and we're going to separate all of these petals. They're really confused about the coffee on steak. Oh, are they? Yeah. So I have a recipe for, I make a lot of my own seasonings, just so that I can control the salt and I can make things as strong or as weak as I like. So I have a recipe for a steak rub that uses ground espresso. And the oils from the coffee do two things. One, they enhance the flavor of the beef. And two, they help tenderize the beef. Because it's acidic. Because it's slightly acidic. And, and nothing wrong with a little bit of bitter. No, and I've done, I used the coffee rub on that pork tenderloin that time. Yeah, that was delicious. It, it was delicious. So we're having a rib steak tonight. Well, you are. Oh, you are too. Oh, yeah. I gotta go. Uh, He's sure working no tonight. <laughs> make sure nobody destroys any of the paintings while they have a wedding and reception <laughs> in an art gallery after hours. So should be entertaining. Yep. So I'm using a float of that that same orange flame to separate each of those petals. So now I'm shading those petals in the back, those little ones, with a float of that orange flame. I love this orange, especially on yellows. It's a wonderful color to shade yellows with. And then my latest obsession this blessed color. I love this yellow. This sunset gold is just gorgeous. And we're going to use that. If you don't have sunset gold, and I know for some getting certain paints has been really difficult, totally get it. Um, you can use saffron yellow instead. Saffron yellow is going is a little bit lighter, but it has that same transparency and the same vibrancy. And I love it. Love, love, love. So going over top of that, all of that uh, orange flame with that, just a wash of that sunset gold. You can use saffron yellow too. I'm just putting a wash of that color over these petals. I love what it does for this. Just makes those yellows pop. 
It's a nice transparent color. It makes all of that shading, all of that orange a little bit hotter. But then when you put it over top of all of it together, that sunny day and that orange flame, just those petals just pop. They just take on a whole another look. And it's a thin wash. I'm just putting a thin transparent wash of this color over top. You can float it on. I'm just using a round, just paint it right over top of everything. It won't hurt. Uh, I believe closed captioning is on. Might be an option on your end. I mm. Last time I checked, I have it on. <laughs> Yeah, I have closed captioning on. So there are our bright sunflower petals. I love, love, love that sunset gold over top of sunny day. So we've got those nice vibrant sunflowers. <laughs> love Can it. we pre-order if they're out of stock or do we have to wait until you have them? Which? I don't know. That was the question. Oh, the tags? I'm guessing so. Yeah. We have them all. Just the ones that we're waiting for are the bumblebees. Ah. Yeah. Everything else we have, we're just waiting on the bumblebees. Because we have so many waiting. <clears throat> oh, we've still been shipping three days a week, but it's just crazy. Crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And shipping anything these days. Oh, my mother of pearl. It's getting expensive. Thank you, Carbon Tax. Oh, it's um, just the general cost. The I shipped a parcel to a friend. And it was $21 and something, which was perfectly reasonable, considering how far it's going. But there was an additional $10 um, surcharge, fuel surcharge added to it. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So, look at that yellow. So vibrant. Pops right off of that blue. I love it. Love, love, love. I love sunflowers. They're so happy. Happy sunflowers. It's a happy flower. Happy so, flower. It is a happy flower. It's a very happy flower. So I've got um, that Sunset Gold is still on my palette. Um, another color I've been using a lot lately is this one, Sprout. I love this green. I've been using that a tremendous amount, especially for leaves, highlighting, and whatnot. I'm going to use a little bit of Plantation Pine on our leaves. I've got a little one up there. We have to base coat because I neglected to. Oh. What? Linda Franco wants to know if you can do a penguin for Christmas holidays. A penguin? A, a penguin. Penguin. I'll have to think about that one. Penguin. <laughs> a penguin. 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 Just a little penguin with a little Santa hat. That'd be cute. A little penguin. Penguin. Make him look like Opus. Opie? Opus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Opus was a penguin, right? I can't remember. Was he a penguin? I don't know. Who's Opus? The little cartoon? You mean Chilly Willy? Not Chilly Willy. I know who Chilly Willy is. He was a penguin. He was a penguin. <laughs> I don't know who Opus is. Opus, cartoon strip? No? No. You don't? Might not have been one I looked at. <laughs> I did, Opus doesn't ring a bell for me. I'm probably just you know, COVID brain, whatever. Yeah, Opus the penguin. I was right. <laughs> this guy. Oh, okay. I remember him now. <laughs> it's Opus the penguin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> J 
Jilly Willy. <laughs> Jilly Willy. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start on these leaves. And we're going to use a float of plantation pine. And we're going to come up right underneath that flower. We want a nice dark shadow right underneath that flower. So right up against the edge of that flower, the petals. And then a nice float to separate those two leaves. And then again, underneath that flower. And don't forget, you got to come down a little bit on one side. Apparently I'm an old soul for remembering that comic strip. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because I, I completely blanked on that one. <laughs> Opus and Bill the Cat, yep. <laughs> you don't remember that one? Wow. No. Then again, it's it's... You know what you read type thing yeah i know well, now, far side i remember <laughs> <laughs> calvin and hobbs calvin and hobbs marmaduke yeah i remember marmaduke but my my favorites were always you know snoopy charlie brown yeah um i but i, I grew up in an era where you know Beetle Bailey was still in the newspapers. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Beetle Bailey was still in the newspaper when I was a kid. Yeah. What was the other one? What was the one I liked? Even, I mean, I remember when Garfield was relatively new and, <laughs> you know. Family Circus? Family Circus was always a good one. Yeah, that's an old school one, too. Yeah. Well, depends on what you call old school, but yeah. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure Family Circus has been around since, like, the 1930s, 1920s. I remember, um, I used to love, there was a woman that wrote these books, and it was just about everyday life, raising families and whatnot. Irma Bombeck. She was brilliant. Incredibly funny. Oh, no. 1960, uh -huh. when it first came out. So I've got my shading in place on these leaves. A little bit of plantation pine up underneath the sunflower and then down the center vein and at the very base of that little leaf where it joins the stem. That is our shading. So we're going to start adding a little bit of highlighting. I'm going to be using sprout I love this this yellow green. It's just it has that brightness like a margarita, but it's a little bit more opaque, so it does really nice things for highlighting. And again, I'm using that sort of sloppy float method that that I like. So I'm just going to put a little highlight down the back side of that leaf, and then down the center vein opposite that first shading. A little highlight there. On the upside, there's not a whole lot of leaves in this piece, so we just need to worry about these ones. And again, I don't putz too much with them. Now this little leaf up here, we're just going to do the tip of the leaf. We put the shadow at the base. Need a little more color for this one. We've put our shadow at the base, so I'm just going to put a nice little highlight at the very tip of that leaf, just to give it a little more definition, a little more shape. And then I'm going to dry that, and then we're going to give one more pass with the shading color. 
just going to thin it a little bit. Don't need to have it too strong. But this is just going to clean up and define our leaves nicely. A little float down that center vein. Just gives those leaves nice definition. Wow. What? Beetle Bailey is still produced in San Antonio, Texas. Wow. I used to love Beetle Bailey. <laughs> and he's still as lazy as ever. Yeah. <laughs> Sarge was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Not Beetle Bailey. Sarge was the, you know, poor put upon sergeant. Trying to get Beetle Bailey to do anything. First time catching a live. I was wondering if all these decor colors are new. I don't recognize the names. Um, a lot of these ones are. The... Uh, the lush green that I use for the leaves is a new color. So is Sunset Gold, which is one of my favorites. And the Sprout is also, these are all 2022 colors. These are brand new this year. Um, I try to keep my color selection as current as possible. So if, if there's new colors coming out, I try to use them to give people an opportunity just to see how they look, what you can do with them, because some of these colors are flipping awesome. So... It is now time to work on the centers of these flowers, and these are super simple. I'm going to use a fountain brush. Uh, this is a Dynasty Black Gold. I know it's a strange looking thing, kind of like an inverted tornado. It's it, a deer foot, right? It, no, this is a fountain. That's a fountain? This is a that fountain. That looks like the reverse of a fountain brush. No, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay, now I get it. So, but this is a fun brush to work with. And so we're going to do the center of our flower. I'm going to pick up a little of that asphaltum, that dark brown that we have in the center. So I have that on my brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that sprout. Remember that bright green that we used for the highlight here? And I'm going to, it's like a double load. So I have both those colors in there. So I'm going to come over to my, the center of my flower. And I'm just going to tap. So this lets you shade and highlight at the same time. It's cheating. It's cheating. <laughs> Whatever. You can't shade and highlight at the exact same time. Actually, you do it every time. Yep. As soon as you put shade down, boom, yep. you boom. highlighted something else. I highlighted something else. So I'm just going to stipple <clears throat> like this. Why does it feel like I'm going through second puberty? I don't know. <clears throat> it's weird. I, w I was beginning to think you weren't out of the first one. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So I'm just, I like the little circles that this creates. So I'm just tippy tapping. I'm a fan of this brush and I don't use it the way it was initially intended. So it's just me. So I'm using that sprout green. Oof, I got too much on now. First time didn't have enough. Now I got too much. So I'll just pick up a little bit of asphaltum. There we go. Okay, I'm happy. So I just want to create sort of a soft textured look in this on this flower. And I'm leaving, you know, a little bit of a darker value and then I'm going to do the same thing in the center of that circle you notice that I left a circle and so I've got a nice little space so there it's it's so, super simple you don't have to worry about getting it perfect which is nice mm -hmm. so I have that and I'm going to again double load it I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a circle Patrick says, gee, there's a whole part of North American culture I don't know, but I'm not really a comic strip reader. Oh, the Beetle Bailey. Beetle Bailey is a, um, originated in wartime. I think it was, was it Vietnam? No, I think it was before that. Yeah? Beetle yeah. Bailey? Mm-hmm. I thought it could have been Korea. No, I think it was a World War II creation. Or it could have been post-World War II, you know, shortly after, but 
So there we go. I've got my center created. Nothing, again, nothing fancy. Don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect because it doesn't matter. Just creating a little texture in the center of our flower. It was the Korean War. Really? Okay. First launch date was 1950. Oh, wow. So post-war. Post-war. Yeah. 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 September 4th, 1950. So a lot of garrison time in between wars. Yeah. So that would be... That well, I wouldn't a say a lot. That's five years. <laughs> so there we are. I just like the texture that this little brush creates for the center of these brush of these flowers. It's just oh. super simple. Jeez. What? You got a Russian? Yeah, we got. Uh... <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, it has. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got. I just stippled in those centers. They're going to look kind of muddy. That's okay, because we're going to be adding some more stuff to this anyway. But we needed a nice dark base. So I'm going to dry that real quick. I'm going to take my half-inch angle and some asphaltum. And coming along the front of this flower right here, I'm going to put a float of asphaltum, just like so. And I'm going to do the same thing in the center. Now all that does is just give it a little height. It provides a shadow at the base and gives our center a little bit of elevation. So there we go. Promoting terrorism? That's not... <laughs> Pornography and sexually explicit material. I had one of those on the Random Act of Kindness page last week. Oh, yeah. They created an event using the Random Act of Kindness page. <laughs> I, I know. So, of course, there was some really risque imagery on that page, so it had to go. There. So, it took a while, but we figured out how to get it off of there. They have been removed. There we go. I if I got this. What you done do? I don't know. I've got some some drippy drips here, and I don't know how I got them. But I don't like it, so I make it go away. <laughs> there we go. It's a wonderful thing about paint. You can make stuff go away if you don't like it. <laughs> So we're going to add a little bit more texture to the centers of these flowers. I'm going to do that with a rigger and a little bit of warm white. Oh, that's a first. I don't have warm white on my palette. I'm just going to use just loosely some little dots just using the brush i don't want a ton of them on here but we do need a little bit of that texture and a few in the center just like so nothing major don't overthink it just you know a few little dots here and there and i'm going to do the same thing to this little one here as well so Again, don't overthink it. Don't overwork it. Just stick a few in like so. So we have a little bit of texture in there. Now, this is my favorite part of this. I love doing this part because this is what makes these sunflowers look um, a little more delicate. Right now, they just look kind of chunky, but I like them a little more delicate. So I'm going to use... Uh, I'm using a 10 knot liner and I'm going to use a little bit of sunny day. Remember the, the buttery yellow that we used at the very beginning? I'm going to mix a little bit of white with it just to make it a touch more opaque. And then I'm going to start on the petals 
where they join the flower and I'm just going to add a squiggly line. Need a little more glaze. So these squiggly lines, they just create a little bit of lightness, a little airiness. They don't have to be perfect. They do not have to be right on the line. They can go off the petal a bit. It's fine. They don't have to be perfect. I kind of like a little point, a little curly cue at the end. But honestly, if they just join, that's okay too. They don't have to be too elaborate or perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I have... I like doing this. I often do this with just a, a gel pen on the edges of some petals, depending on the flower. But that little squiggly line just softens the edges of the petals a little bit so they don't look quite so heavy handed. It gives the flowers a nice delicate look. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one down here. And I like it done with this tenot because it's not um, it's not so heavy and I can get nice fine lines. And that little bit of warm white added to it just gives the lines a little more opacity and a little brightness. Just creates a subtle contrast. There we go. And then you're going to repeat that. This time with that, remember that sprout green that we used for the highlights? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a little bit of warm white to it. Just to make it a little more opaque. And I'm going to thin this out and we're going to do the same thing to those leaves. So, and again, I'm just using my liner. And if I try to keep those lines fine, 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 it works even better. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to do the same thing to this little leaf up here. I start where the stem joins the leaf. And then it gives you the opportunity to do these little vines and tendrils at the same time with that same mixture. So if you want, you can tuck in more vines and tendrils wherever you choose. So if you like a little extra greenery, just feel free to tuck some in. It won't hurt. Just like that. So a little bit with that sprout green. So I'm going to dry this really quick. And I'm going to grab my, Your thing in the lid. my black gel pen, because this is one of my favorite tools. I love my gel pen. This is also where I get to throw in some little fine details. I do like these little details. Usually just three per petal, just little fine lines, like so. It just creates a little more texture. Nothing fancy, nothing elaborate, just, you know, a few little lines. And I use my gel pen a lot. I do a lot with my gel pens. I do like these ones, and this one in particular. It's a Sakura ink, nice Japanese ink, it's very black, so it works really, really nicely. I like little scribbly details in things. And I have both of those pens. These are the Feng Tuan pens, the 0.38. They're ultra fine. I use the red for tracing and transferring because I can see where I've been and it doesn't leave a heavy, chunky line for my line drawing. So I'm going to position, 
position my line drawing back and I'm going to secure it with some tape because I want to retrace my lettering the farm fresh on there I think I'm lined up but if not I can erase it I don't recommend varnishing over the, the pen either you should put down some matte spray first yep I put a coat of matte spray on everything I use a lot of different media when I'm painting, so uh, just to avoid any potential issues, I use my matte spray. So, I like these. Ultra fine. See? Nice, fine, thin lines so that you're not driving yourself crazy. So, um... We're going to talk about this lettering down here. This is, I've got a coat of gesso on here. The lettering isn't fully opaque yet. I would like it a bit more opaque. So I'm going to put one more coat of white over top of this gesso. I'm using a number two rigger. And at this point I don't have to take too, too much care. I just make sure that everything gets covered well. But that gesso covered quite well, so just a little bit of gesso to, or warm white just to give it a nice finish. I just thin out that warm white with a little bit of Joe Sonia's, and then the it's just enough color to give us what we need over top of that gesso. I think we're almost there. Just a couple of little thin spots, really, that I'm covering up. Just so that we've got nice coverage. And I got a little spot here where I kind of got some green on my letters. These riggers are really nice for painting lettering because they're shaped like a flat, which means they have a nice square edge. So you can stand them right on their chisel edge and create some nice straight, crisp lines. And they're small enough that you can touch up a few little details. So I think I am happy with that. These little tags are really great surfaces. I've just been having so much fun with them. Oh, I've got to show you my rooster. Then I'll tell you the story about my rooster. I really love the rooster. I have a thing for roosters. So, as Renee will tell you, because I have roosters all over the house. <laughs> um this little guy has been about six different colors and I've redesigned him at least four times. And I didn't have another one to, to repaint until the other day. So I finally got him all painted, but you could, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but I actually had originally given him some textured feathers and it didn't work out, just did not work. I wasn't happy with it at all. And then I ended up, um, putting a red around his eye because it was just, he just was not coming together all that nicely. So I ended up with this nice little green rooster with, you know, the comb, the waddle and the whole bit. So I'm quite happy with him now, but it took a bit. And then of course I had to have a sunflower in there for rise and shine. And then I used the same color palette as I did for this one. And I switched out the check for a uh, chicken wire. I thought that was appropriate. So he turned out quite nicely in the end. He was not so simple, I'm afraid. And then um, the other one is the, the lamb, the pure wool. <laughs> this one I had fun with. Um, I think she's really cute. And again, I wanted to do something that sort of stuck with the country theme. I went with a slightly larger check. I did brown-eyed Susans 
uh, which I really like. I wish they were a little more vibrant, but I'll, I can play with that. And then, um, of course, our little black faced black faced sheep. I think she's kind of cute. And uh, pure wool is the theme of the day. I've mounted them all the same way I've mounted the cows. I just I love that elevation. I just think that it works really, really well for this particular piece. So I have two more of those coming and then the last two are the sheep and the or the uh, horse and the goat. And I have I have the horse design, but I'm stuck on the goat, uh, but I will figure it out. <laughs> so to finish the lettering on this piece, uh, I'm going to use a 3 8 angled shader and we need to put a float at the bottom of these letters. I'm using a little bit of Bahama Blue. That's not Bahama Blue. That is. I got it mixed up with Crystal Blue the other day. This is Crystal Blue. And they're quite literally one value different. So if you don't have Crystal Blue or don't have Bahama Blue, they're easily interchangeable. Um, but I like the Bahama Blue. That's my... I think it is my favorite deck work color. Although it's you know, running a close second to that. Sunset Gold is running a close second to it. So I've got a little bit of Bahama Blue and we're going to float the bottom. Now, it's not technically a float because we're going to put a little bit of color right at the bottom. And then I'm using the chisel edge of the brush to pull the color up each segment. It's difficult to float in these little tiny spaces, so we're not going to beat ourselves up too much. So I'm just tapping and pulling the color up the length of the letter so that we've come about, I would say, one third, a little slightly less than half way up the letter. I'm going to do that to all of the letters on the bottom of milk. So it's not really a float. I'm chisel blending and coming just shy of halfway up the bottom. I just like the way this looks at the bottom of the letter. It just gives them a, I don't know, a little bit of visual weight instead of just this bright white on that darker background. There we go. So I'm going to rinse this and then we need to add a little more depth to these letters. I'm going to do that with a pen at towards the end, but I'm going to dry this. Mm -hmm. Ashfaltum lost its first place standing for most favorite? Um, Ashfaltum is probably <coughs> the most used color, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's Bahama Blue. Bahama Blue is my favorite. Has been and always will be. Well, I was Tuscan Red for a long time. Yeah? Yeah. And then Bla Bahama Blue came out. and it was Explains the red wall. I love Tuscan Red. It's still one of my favorite reds. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put a float of Asphaltum over top of my Bahama Blue. Now, if you are not a fan of Asphaltum, then you don't have to do this. If you prefer the nice bright, you know, Bahama blue at the bottom of the lettering, then you don't have to do this. But I like how it gives this a little bit of weight that the lettering sort of sits down a bit. And then to enhance that, just to give it a little more depth, 
you could use um, your liner brush and a little bit of black paint, but it's such a small space. So I'm using my, my black gel pen and I'm literally just going to trace the left side of my lettering. Just a little bit of black. And even though it's just a thin, fine line, it does quite a bit. I'll spin the wheel when she's done the lettering. <laughs> They're getting anxious. They're getting anxious. <laughs> got some good, uh, good prizes. I'm going to have some really good ones for uh, 12 Days of Christmas. No doubt. December 3rd. Yep. Those who don't know what 12 Days of Christmas is, you're in for a... It's in, we're in for a fun day. Yeah. Um, we're probably going to go a little long, so make sure you get your tea. <laughs> <laughs> Hot um, cocoa or hot toddy. Hot toddy. Uh, your name your poison. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Whatever blows your hair back. Yeah. How do you store your gel pens? I store mine tip down, cover on. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I really like that particular type, that it, either the Uniball Signo or this uh, Fang Tuan because of that Sakura ink. Super black, nice and dark, and it just rolls over a painted surface like nothing. So, easy peasy. And then I'm going to show you my other favorite toy, which is this one. If you don't feel like pa hand painting your lettering, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to do it with a gel pen. And I'm looking for something. I can't remember what it was. A color for farm fresh? No, that's this. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, oh, it's batter. Doesn't matter. No, you do that I after just, you're I, done everything. Yeah, I had a brain fart. Brain fart. Yeah. yeah. So this is these ones I've started using. I have the the Uniball Signal white opaque white gel pen. And in the 1.0, and I have these, which is, this one is the Arteza. I just love this one. Didn't think you could beat the white ink in that Uniball, but this one is spectacular. So this is the Arteza. I love these. They roll so smoothly on a painted surface. And again, a great quality ink. works like a charm if you're not comfortable um using a liner brush to paint in the, that little lettering there then then don't use the dwight gel pen this one works especially well <laughs> so i'm not driving myself crazy because <laughs> believe me that's a short trip <laughs> so there we go The font that I'm using on here is just so cute, and I've been using it a lot lately. <laughs> this is that autumn, autumn, autumn something. Do you carry the Arteza pens on your website? I do. Yep. I have both the Uniball and these. But, yep, these ones work very, very well. I'm quite pleased with that. So the nice part is they do take a little bit longer to dry. So make sure you let them dry really well before you try to erase any lines. I do all of that right towards the end. Okay. Is that so, it for the lettering? That's it for lettering. So, so all you gotta do is the cow now. <laughs> well, I gotta finish the finish the tag, but we've only a couple more steps. So you go ahead and spin the wheel. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> spin. He wants to spin.
no. to give away. Wrong They're camera. beautiful. Wrong camera. Wrong camera. <laughs> three of these. I, I'm not showing up on there. <laughs> there we are. So we have three of these beautiful books. The retail value on these is uh, $30 Canadian, $25 US. So we have three of these to give away on the 12 days of Christmas. We have a ridiculous number of prizes. So, and oodles and oodles and oodles of Dynasty brushes to give away. So, let's get back to painting our cow. I guess they didn't hear us at all. Oh, no. During the wheel spinning. Oops. I don't know what happened. I had the microphones there and set up. And... Okay. But everybody can hear us now? It was a silent intermission. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> With prizes. With prizes. <laughs> How bad could it be? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll get that sorted out for next time. Okay. So just to reiterate, <laughs> if your name popped up on the wheel, so if you're Brenda, Brenda Travis, Lois Ann, or Katie Fradnick, go to the front page of my website, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner and send us a message with your shipping information so that we can get that out to you this week. So Boop. that's pink cows. It's pink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. So we've just a couple of, of more things to do to this to finish off this background and then we'll paint our cow. The cow actually works up very, very quickly. So I'm going to grab a round brush. You can do this with um, a rigger, with a long liner, but I'm going to do it with the round. And I'm using a little bit of um, cobblestone, which is that gray, that warm gray tone that we used for the stenciling. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to start here, just off of that sunflower, and I'm going to paint a jiggly line. A nice imperfect little broken paint effect around the edge with that warm gray. I'm going to skip over the sunflower. And start over here on the blue again. So just roll the brush along so that it creates sort of this broken or chipped paint effect at the edge of the surface. And come around to where it joins the sunflower again. So we have that nice little chippy paint effect. I'm going to dry it real quick. And this is the other place that I like to use that uh, opaque white pen. You can use a, a liner brush and a little bit of thinned warm white for this. Um, but I really like the consistency of that white gel pen for this. And you just use the pen and follow the shape of that chipped paint that you did all along the edge. It just creates a little highlight on the edge of that. So depending on how rough your chip paint is, there we go. Just creates a nice little highlight at the edge of that and accentuates that chip paint look. Sound fun. this chip, chipped paint thing I learned from Chris Hoy. She did it on a piece at a show one time and I just loved the effect. So whenever I talk about this particular technique, she's the first person that I, I think of and give credit to because it was her creation, not mine. But it sure is fun and it adds a lot of nifty details to your surface. So I'm going to dry this well and then we're going to spatter it. I like to use two colors for spattering. I'm going to use a little bit of thinned warm white and uh, a little bit of thinned asphaltum. I very rarely go to black simply because I find it a little on the harsh side. So we're going to use 
a little bit of thinned warm white. I'm using my fugly brush, which is this one. This is that um, an encaustic oval. If you're looking for them, you won't find a fugly brush anywhere, but you can find an encaustic oval. So a little bit of warm white. I do like my spatter, especially on country themed pieces. And then I'm going to repeat that with a little bit of Ishfaltum. I do like that little bit of age that that little thinned Ashfaltum does to that. So there is our background piece for our cow. Super simple. It's lots of techniques and layers, but it's not really all that difficult to paint. It's just a little time consuming to get it all in there, but I love how this looks. So we'll set our tag aside and we're going to work on our cow. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a bit more. A little tighter, yep. So I've got a little cow, I need my pencil. I threw in some base color. I've got a little bit of uh, lamp black around the ears, little stroke of cotton candy. You can use warm white. I just stroked in a little cotton candy in there. And then I just used a chalk pencil to draw in her eyes. But we need to, I'm gonna give her some nostrils here. And she needs an, a lip like so. And I think we're okay. So if you have a look at our, our girl here, she's got some floating along the top. So we're, we've got all this white on here. I'm going to load up an angle with a little bit of Eschfaltum and we're going to just put a float of Eschfaltum like this. And this is just going to create the shadow under that hair that's going to fall on top of her forehead. And then I like to float Eschfaltum down both sides of that white. Just like that. So that it doesn't look like perfectly white. There we go. Now she's got a little bridge to her nose. I'm going to put a float of that asphaltum right across the bridge of her nose. Right above that, that pink nose. Just a little float there. And then we're going to use a float under her lip right here on that pink, but just under her lip. We're just going to create a little depth in there. There we go. And then inside her ears, we're going to float right over top of that pink, like so, inside those ears. Now I'm going to thin out a little bit of warm white. We're going to create her eyes next. So I want to put a float of warm white towards the outside curve of the eyeball. Just like so. And that's going to give her eyes some shape. And this part is always a little scary. This is not a really um, 
detail or meticulously painted cow. We're relying heavily on some really loose techniques for this. So I need a little bit of lamp black. A oh, little bit. So I'm thinning out a little bit of lamp black with my brush. We're going to add a few little details to our cow. And we're going to fix a few things as we go. So we need hairs. So she needs to look a little less structured. So we're going to use that lamp black to create all those little fine hairs. So neatness doesn't count for this. We're just going to create a lot of little fine lines coming off of that black, like so. And right above her nose, right here, I need to put just a few little lines, like so. And then we need little comma strokes for her nose, like so. Now all of these little lines that you put in are just going to help create all of that texture. And the illusion of hair. So don't worry too much about getting them perfect, as it doesn't matter. It's just to create the illusion of a little bit of texture. That she's got hair instead of just the solid color. So that's why I didn't worry too much about having all of that, those base coats absolutely perfect, because it doesn't matter. I want to create that texture and the hair. And I'm going to do the same thing to her ears. So when I'm doing this, I'm pulling that hair. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And again, neatness doesn't really count for this. And you're going to do the same thing into the ears on the bottom. Just sort of creates that look that there's hair. So already our little cow is taking shape. So remember that gray that we used for the background. We're going to use a little bit of that on our cow. I'm going to start shaping her eyes a little bit with a little bit of that gray. So I'm going to give her a little eyelash right across the top of the eye with that gray. I don't know. You're not chatting. Too busy not watching. Not. Too busy watching. And I can't see Facebook. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to, remember we highlighted on the outside of the eye, I'm going to put a dot and then a smaller dot towards the outside to give us a nice little highlight. And I'm going to dry that. I'm going to take an eraser to this to remove all of that chalk line so I can see where I am. So I have an eraser here somewhere. Maybe. I don't want to help one. It's my little Tombow. Ooh, I smeared my eyeball. 
wasn't quite dry. Oh my God, I'm batting a thousand today. I should have done this in the first place. I'm telling you. So I've managed to smear the highlights on my eyeballs. I'm gifted today. So I'm just taking a little bit of black paint and I will touch that up because I hooped it. There we go. And now I will dry it again and then fix the highlights on the eyeballs because I messed that up. It wasn't quite dry and then I tried to erase. Let's try this again. Hi, nice bright highlight. Hello. So I've got a little bit of warm white. And this is the fun part. Remember all of those little fine lines that we spent so much time doing when we did them all in black? We're going to do them again in white. And except I'm going to start up here on the top of the head and create some texture coming down onto our cowl. So remember that dark float that I created up top? This is now going to be a little less solid, a little lighter. We've got some nice fine hairs coming off of our top of our cow, and we can overlap onto that black a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing on the tops of the ears. So I'm coming down, starting off of the edge of the ear, and then just lightly stroking in some white across the top of the ear. And then onto the ear here inside. So the rest of this is just nice fine lines of warm white. Robin Storm says, I give up. I can't paint and watch Tracy at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so that fine line you're going to come down here onto the edge of the eyeball I like to put in just a few little eyelashes because we can and it makes her look pretty And all of these little fine lines just create that texture of the hair. So overlapping onto the white through the black. I like these little fine lines and they are ultra fine. The brush is almost dry. Our little cow is not overly detailed. I didn't want her to be. She's fairly loose. So we're going to put a little highlight at the top of bridge of her nose with a couple of strokes of white. And we're going to put a highlight right above the nostril. A little stroke of white. And again at the top of the lip. Right there. A 
And again, we need some eyelashes because we can. Who's going to tell us different? So it's very loose. You don't have to worry too much about getting them absolutely perfect because it doesn't matter. The idea is just to keep them fairly light. And I like the the overlap with having these you know, nice fine lines, bright white mixing with that black fine lines. Just creates a little bit of texture. Did you just call her a loose heifer? She's a loose heifer, yep. <laughs> now, now, be nice to the heifer. There we go. And what brush are you using? This one is a 10 aught extra long detail liner. It's a Dynasty Micron. One of my faves. I use this thing all the time. She's fun and she's super easy to paint. I'm just going to fix this up all a little bit. And I'm going to let her dry. And I'm going to come in with a little more asphalto. A couple of things I want to deepen. I do like my asphalto. It's my go-to toning color. I use it for all sorts of things. So I want to warm that white a little at the top of the head. So just putting a little bit of asphalto there. And a little bit under the nose here. I want it to deepen those nostrils a little. So I put a little float of asphaltum in. And I'm deepening the bridge of the nose a little because I'm not thrilled with that. And a little more here and here. And I do like the ears to have a little more depth, so a little float of asphaltum in there. And now I'm going to spatter her a little bit. A little bit of thinned asphaltum. Just lightly spatter her. She's been out in the pasture all day. She's not going to be neat and tidy. And I'll dry her and then we are ready to mount her to our tag. So I have, I'm notorious for keeping little bags of stuff all over the place. I have tons of them. So in this little bag of stuff, I have these, these little thin um, little shapes that I've, I had a bag full of them. I just chose the smallest one for this. And my Aileen's Tacky Glue, because I like my Tacky Glue. And I'm going to glue these things together till they create about a quarter of an inch, which is, in this case, three of them. So I glued them together with a little bit of Aileen's. Give them a chance to sit for a bit so that let the glue set. And we're going to mount that to the back of our cow. And give that a couple of seconds to set. And then you're going to take another dab of Aileen's. 
and then you're going to mount your cow to your plaque. Now, how you decide to do that is entirely up to you. It can be straight on, it's going to work. It can be up and off, and it's going to work. You can pull it over and to the right, or you can mount it however you want. You, if you wanted to, you could completely reverse this design and do it the other side. Either way, it's going to work. So then just press it into place. And then let it dry. Leave it laying flat to let it dry, just so that it doesn't slide off. But I like the ability to decide which way I want it. And I think I'm just going to go with the way I had it, the first one. And have it at a nice little angle. And then I'll set that aside to dry. What appeals to me about this design is that little bit of elevation does such neat things for this piece. It gives it a little bit of dimension. And it reminded me of some of those old um, bull billboards from years ago where they had a dimensional piece that stuck out past the edge of the act the original board so that's kind of where i was going with this so that is our farm fresh milk yay yay such a fun piece to paint tinkerbell boom boom tinkerbell <laughs> not sure how i feel about that but <laughs> <laughs> So that is our project for this week. Next Saturday, I am teaching again. So we will have a video up for you. Um, it will we'll pop up on the YouTube channel at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, which is 1 p.m. Atlantic, which is my time. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that. I have a nice little RAK project for you. We're going to be doing a little snowman. And uh, you don't need to have a whole lot to do it, but it's going to be a fun piece and the pattern will be available for download at the same time. So you will have that. And uh, next Saturday is my last teaching engagement for the rest of the year. So uh, no more missed Saturdays unless the world falls apart. So <laughs> um, except Christmas, except Christmas. Well, who knows? It all depends on how Christmas goes. <laughs> 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 yeah but uh yeah so this coming saturday or next saturday um i we will not be live but you will have a video to watch for that one it's a fun little pin project for the random acts of kindness i like to do one of those at least once a year uh, they're a lot of fun and uh, this one is kind of cute and i think you guys are really going to enjoy it so fast easy and you can do it on almost anything that you have available you don't need any space specific type surface for it so it'll be fun and it'll give everybody something to do tomorrow you will have a brand new printable available to you uh, there are a bunch up on my website right now so if you haven't had a look at the free printables please take a few minutes to go and do that surf through the website while you're at it we've got lots of goodies in there what new year's eve lands on a saturday it does happy new year <laughs> so your last live for the year will be on new hey we should do something fun something special do something special yeah that's pretty cool i think so well we got 12 days of christmas on the third yep so we have a reg a regular scheduled saturday on the 26th of this month yep cool and then 12 days of christmas on the third mm -hmm. regular scheduled 10 17 Christmas Eve lands on a Saturday. We'll see. We'll see? We'll see. We'll see. Could be fun. Could be fun. <laughs> we might do a little something, something. And then, uh, yeah, we go into 2023. Wow. I don't know where the time's going, but she's going. She's going. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. That is it for us this weekend. Thanks so much, as always, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. And we hope that you enjoy these uh, smaller projects we have quite a few coming up but i think everybody wants to do some flowers some florals and something a little more elegant because we got a whole pile of christmas stuff coming up for you too so i'm thinking our next one is going to be a floral so break out your paint brushes and it's typical of me it'll probably be on a canvas so it'll be fun i can promise you that <laughs> so all right guys in the meantime Watch out for RSV, watch out for COVID because that's flying around like crazy. And for 
God's sake, go get your flu shot <laughs> <laughs> so that you can avoid getting sick because it's nasty out there right now. All right, guys, we love you and please stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Tinkerbell. <laughs>